All right, so both of those herbs are going to come around at the same time since we're kind of pressed for time. So I will talk to you. Does anybody kind of have a bit of an idea of what wild foods are? What the natural foods are? Okay. What we're going to do today is become kitchen alchemists. That's kind of what we have to do in order to understand our bodies and understand what we need to thrive and have optimal health is to know when we go to the market, when we get in the kitchen, what are we creating to give to our families, to ourselves, and be our own kitchen alchemists, all right? Um, because it, everything you put in your body will magically or medicinally affect you, whether it's for the good or for the bad. What happens, and, and this has happened for centuries, is aboriginal foods, original foods, nature's foods, creator's foods, are foods that were made by God. They were not tainted by man. Unfortunately, a lot of foods that we eat today can't be recognized by, Jesus would recognize it. Um, it's food that's never been seen on the planet before. A lot of food were made in labs. A lot of these foods were made so that they would yield more crop, a lot of monocropping, a lot of uh, cross-breeding, cross-pollination. Uh, a lot of the food that we're eating is affecting children. It's making them autistic. We're seeing childhood diabetes never seen that before. We're seeing obesity with these children. Like, it's more than just the fact that they're being still, the fact that they're in front of television. It's a lot more than that. The children are eating foods that do not agree with their natural biomolecular structure. And I got so excited to see these black, small, organic grapes. And I grabbed them immediately, and I started chopping on them in the bag. And I'm thinking, oh, oh yeah. And I just I'm going, I'm tasting the seeds in here. There's the seeds in here. And I'm thinking, hold up. So I put them back and my girl said, oh, you like seeds? I said, no, it's not that I like seeds, but I don't want to eat a grape without a seed. What's the way that God make a grape without a seed? Does that make sense? God don't make grapes. This and seedless, that they're trying to make it convenient for you. They've got somebody in a lab working on making food convenient for you so you don't have to pick out seeds, but we need those seeds. And a lot of them are actually digestible. And what happens also that's really unfortunate um, is when food doesn't have seeds, these fruits and vegetables, it has a manganese inhibitor that causes sterility. And this is why y'all constantly see me on Facebook saying, don't eat food without seeds. If your food ain't got no seed in it, don't eat it. It causes sterility. So a lot of women who have reproductive issues, if your food has no reproductive organ, how can you have a reproductive organ? Most of those foods are starch. Most of those foods are starchy. They are acidic. All right, and this is how we get all this inflammation, inflammation, inflammation of the arteries, heart of the arteries. Um, uh, you're getting a, a heart of the blood vessels. You're seeing um, all types of all types of diseases that come from inflammation. So an important thing to understand is most of these foods are acidic in nature. Um, even, even if it's a vegetable, it could be a fresh, genetically modified apple it's still going to be acidic in nature. Um, and it has a different electrical charge also than uh, original foods, aboriginal foods. The electrical charge is different. That's what essentially we're eating to eat sunlight. We're not eating just to eat food. Um, food really is a middleman for sunlight. And typically, if you get out there and you get enough sun, and, and you guys know we live in homes now, we live in, we live totally different from our primitive way of lifestyle. We're not getting as much sun as we should. A lot of us, because we are dark, we don't want to be in the sun. You know, we're uncomfortable in the sun. We're being taught that we it shouldn't be in the sun. It's dangerous. UV rays and all this stuff, you know, has got us afraid of being out in the sun. And that's your first source of food. Phototropic. We are phototropic things. We have photosynthesis, like plants. We're all plants. Plants dig themselves into the ground. They're breaking down rock and turning it into minerals and sucking it up and putting it into minerals that your body can assimilate. We can't go on the ground and just eat a rock, all right? But we need the minerals for our bones. That's what rocks are for. And the calcium, the magnesium, all these things that are in the dirt, we need for the plants to go in there and suck that up, breathe in that air, breathe in that sunlight, assimilate it. That's the photosynthesis process. We take that food and eat it, and we're experiencing what we call phototrophic, phototropic. When you're phototropic, you are eating sunlight, and you are digesting that sunlight, and therefore using it to animate your body, to heal your body. So there are some people who are experimenting with breatharianism. They're eating air. Yeah, and, and my first thought was that, you know, air is so jacked up. <laughs> but then 
gonna get the soil is jacked up, everything's jacked up, and you can nourish your soil, you can grow soil, you know, you can do that. Um, with air, you gotta work a little harder at that. If you want to know where the best water is, I'd say get distilled water. Get water that is in glass. If you're gonna carry around water, carry your water in glass because the plastic does release an uh, EPA hormone that will seep into your water and it causes cancer, breast cancer, all kinds of issues. So be careful about plastic water bottles. You need to stay away from them, do your best to stay away from them. I won't say don't get your water in, you gotta get your water in, but be very mindful where you get your water. The best water is going to still be distilled because that's the way that nature makes water. The, through the water cycle, when water goes up and comes down and it's going through the whole water cycle, it's a distillation process. When it's when you eat it in a cucumber or in a watermelon, that's a distillation process. That's how God makes water, is through distilling it. And the, the fruits and vegetables is the bulk of where you should be getting your water. If you're eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, you should not be dehydrated. They were buoyant, they were what's called um, aerobic. Aerobic, but not anaerobic. So um, the blood cells just from drinking that water change dramatically just in her drinking that water one time. All right. This is stuff that I mean down to your cellular level, your tissues, which affect everything, your skin, your hair, your nails, your everything, your mind. Um, you gotta get that water in. All right. If you have not incorporated them into your life, it'll change your life. You'll be so hydrated. You'll have so many minerals. You'll feel energized. You won't be as hungry all throughout the day. So this is organic dandelion here. Y'all know how much I love my dandelion greens. I don't play around. I eat these every day. These are amazing. They are very bitter. They grow wild. I know y'all see them outside. They're everywhere. And they're Jackson. And that's why, not, that's, why, that's why we need to eat them. Because they are so wild. They attend to. Um, Wild foods don't have to be tended to like that. They grow, period. They grow in nature, period. They are wild. They don't need your attention. They actually will dominate any environment that you put them in. You put a dandelion around a punk, domesticated plant, it's going to get annihilated. You understand what I'm saying? It's a real deal plant, and it is meant to be uh, consumed. And um, it's meant to make you strong. Um, so we're going to the bitter taste. But as you know with EOB, bitter is good. Bitter is the opposite of sweet. So bitter is going to teach, retrain your taste buds to like it. You know, it's going to retrain it because really it's not you that doesn't like the bitter. Trust me. If you go to some indigenous people and hand them a lollipop, they're probably going to spit, you know, it's too sweet. Their bodies don't understand that. All right. But because we've come into this world eating salt and sugars constantly, our bodies want the parasites want the sweet. It's not you that wants the sweet food. It's the parasite. It's the yeast. It's the fungus. It's that's what wants the sweets. So I don't. I don't. My my godchildren say, well, I don't like it, Chef I don't like this. I, don't like. I say, you don't know what you like because you don't. Your your taste buds have been hijacked. You don't know what you like. You don't even have a mind about what you like. You're thinking through the mind of a parasite through yeast because like attracts like. If your body's filled with candida, and most of us are filled with yeast, candida, sugar, that's all we eat for breakfast, potatoes, breakfast, lunch, cheese, bread, meat, every day. That's it. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's another source of a bread, a meat, a cheese, a starch, some grease. That's it. Salt, sugar, that's it. So when you eat like that for so many years, even with myself, I've been off of it for maybe 14, 15 years. Still, it's so much a part of us for generations that you still have an aversion to certain things. So your taste buds will change. So don't worry about what you don't like today. You say, I don't really like vegetables like that. Don't worry about that, it's not true. You don't know what you like. You're gonna learn about what you like as you keep your body changes. Everything's gonna change, trust me. All right, so you'll start to like, oh, this, this concept that we've been given from the meat packing industry, through commercials, you know, they hire all these models, eat a burger, eat drink the milk and all this. If, if, if it was all that, they wouldn't have to hire all these people to do this. This is ridiculous. Um, black sesame seed on top of everything. Your salads, your stews, your this, your that. Find creative ways to get it in, you know? And just pour it off. Give it to your children. Give it to your husband, your mother. Keep those, or keep yourself hydrated, all right? 
Alright, so I'm about to get my blend on, y'all, so we can taste some, some elixirs. And we're going to open up all the doors. We're going to spread everything out. And we're going to turn into a big old party. And DJ's about to come in. So I do consultations. This is my life. This is all I do. I do uh, nutritional consultations. I help you to transition from a sad diet to a healthy diet. So if you need some counseling, if you need private coaching, if you need private classes, if you need um, in-home cook, private cook, catering, lessons, etc., you can come talk to me about that. All right? And I'll have my business cards with you guys. 1-800 number all of them. Yes, I got you. All right. So, ladies, it comes out, and they do a little test. Bam! Alkaline. No. God don't run water over your face. All right. So, for women who are healing wound issues, reproductive issues, watermelon is really, really good. You can mix watermelon with some of the other things that we're uh, going to do today. Watermelon. Any of the red fruits, um, hibiscus, sorrel, red raspberry, red clover, um, watermelon, all those things can come together and create a really powerful tonic or elixir for uh, Put it off in the fridge, take two tablespoons of it, throw it in your smoothie every morning. Right? Throw it in your desserts, make a pot filling, whatever. Ice cream. <laughs> all right, so that's coming around. And I guess we'll move on to the next one, which is hemp seeds. How many of you guys are familiar with hemp seeds? Set it off to the side, 